Hi, this is Lauren Lockman from the Tanglewood Wellness Center. And I'm going to be speaking this morning a little bit about teeth and dental issues. And, you know, like, like almost every area of health that we look at and talk about, I would suggest there's a lot of misunderstanding around teeth. Um, there are many people out there that have had significant dental problems, and people have had dental problems with almost every diet you can imagine. And that's because, generally speaking, it's not really the diet so much that's at fault. Or perhaps, put that a different way, any diet except an optimal diet is going to be at fault. And so anytime anyone's doing anything but the diet that the body was actually designed for, there are likely to be some dental issues. Okay? Um, these show up in the form primarily of cavities, but they show up in the form of, of uh, other issues as well, um, including uh, dying teeth, you know, including um, gum issues, and so forth. And so I'm going to take you to the same place I've probably taken to you to in many of my videos, and that is asking a simple question. What would happen if we actually lived in our natural environment? No, for, what if we didn't have dentists and we didn't have toothbrushes and we didn't have toothpaste and we simply lived in the jungle and we ate the foods our body was designed for? What would we be likely to experience? Well, what happens in nature? How often are there serious dental issues with animals in nature? The answer, not very often. Every species that consumes its natural diet and meets its needs the way its body was designed to doesn't have significant issues, dental issues. Why would they? Okay, the same thing is true for us. So if, you've, if you're coming to the conversation, if, you know, if you've got pre-existing dental issues, well, that's one thing. And you can take a look at how can I best heal my body? Well, the answer I hope is clear if you've watched other videos of mine, and that is by resting as completely as possible and allowing your body to put all of its energy into healing whether it's healing your teeth, whether it's, it's healing uh, a hemorrhoid, whether it's healing uh, a damaged heart, what to do is exactly the same. Let your body put all of its energy into healing. So most dental issues will heal when given the chance. And I'm gonna speak today about a little bit of my own history because I, I want you guys to, to know uh, a first-hand report of what's possible. So I'll tell you that uh, like most people, probably, uh, I never really liked dentists very much or going to the dentist. And when I gave up on medicine, I gave up on dentistry as well. And so 26 years ago, I saw a dentist for the last time, um, for a while. But maybe 15 years ago, roughly, I got a call from the husband of an ex-girlfriend. And he was a holistic dentist. And he, they lived in the area, and we were still very friendly, and he wanted to renovate, to remodel his offices. And his wife, my ex-girlfriend, said, why don't you call Lauren? He's real good at, at doing design and maybe even can help you with the construction. Maybe he can help you with this. And so I get a call from this guy, and he says, Lauren, I'd like to remodel my offices. My wife suggested maybe you can help me out. And I said, sure. I'll tell you what, I still have some mercury amalgams in my teeth. Maybe we can do a trade, and I can do some work for you, and you can take my amalgams out. At the time, it, it cost, uh, I think, several hundred dollars per tooth, and I had 12 or 13 amalgams. And so, uh, by the way, I developed all those amalgams one summer. Um, you know, I, I grew up... I grew up in a household where we had no candy, we had no soda, uh, I grew up eating a very clean and healthy diet. And when I turned 14, I started mowing lawns for a living. I had money for the first time. And we had a community swim club where there were soda and candy machines. And every day, I'd go down there and I'd spend several dollars per day on candy and soda. And by the end of the summer, I developed all these, more than a dozen cal uh, cavities. I'd never had any cavities at all until that summer, and I developed uh, 12 or 13 cavities that one summer. And so these many years later, uh, I'm talking to this dentist and I'm thinking, this is gonna be expensive, maybe we can do some kind of a trade. Well, he says, why don't you come in and let me have a take a look, right? So I'm sitting in his office and it occurs to me at that moment that 
I'm probably going to have to pay him money. It just seemed kind of ironic. He had called me to hire me, and I was going to wind up paying him because I had so many amalgams, the trade was probably going to be imbalanced. And he said, what are you talking about? I said, well, I've got like 12, 12 amalgams. He said, Lauren, I'm, I'm looking in your mouth. You've got five. I said, no, I've got like 12. He said, Lauren, I'm looking in your mouth. There are five amalgams. That's all there is. So what had happened was, in the seven or eight, or maybe it had been 10 years since I'd seen a dentist, during which time I'd been consuming a raw vegan diet and had fasted dozens of times, all the rest of the amalgams had fallen out of my teeth or had been, had been taken apart by my body. And the teeth had filled back in because I had no cavities and I didn't have all those fillings. They were gone and my teeth had filled back in. In fact, he's looking in my mouth and he says to me, he says, what, what do you do? What kind of, how do you, you know, how do you take care of your teeth? I said, why do you ask? He said, well, I rarely see a mouth that looks this healthy. What do you do? I said, well, I brush my teeth usually at least once a day with only water. I use no toothpaste. By the way, I use no tooth powders. I use none of that stuff. This is, you know, this is all commercial crap. You don't need it. There's no need for those things. Okay? Water's all you need with a soft toothbrush. And I said, I usually do that once a day. Sometimes I skip a day. Just depends. Um, I never, ever floss my teeth. And I don't do anything else. I haven't been to a dentist, I told him at that point. It had been like 10 years since I'd been to a dentist. Well, he, he took a swab from my mouth and put it on a slide. And then he put it on a big screen. He said, let me show you the bacteria in your mouth. There's one. There's one over there. There's another one down there. He said, usually the slide is covered with bacteria. He said, I, I don't think I've ever seen a mouth this clean before. And the funny thing was, I'd known this guy uh, probably for five years. And I would see him around sometimes at events. And again, my, uh, his, his wife, my ex-girlfriend, and I were still good friends. And you know, we would see each other sometimes. And I told him on many occasions about fasting and raw food, and he didn't believe me. He was still eating uh, chicken and fish, no red meat. Uh, but he wasn't a vegetarian, and he didn't believe in fasting. And I said, you know, dude, this is why you're seeing what you're seeing. It's not because I take special care of my teeth. I don't. Okay? So, now, many people talk about, and by the way, I've, I've seen the same thing happen with other people, so I'm not the only one this has happened to. This does happen sometimes. And although it's rare, and people think it's, it's amazing and hard to believe, think about this. What, what else in your body is very much like your teeth? Bones, very similar structure and constituency. Bones heal all the time. That's not unusual. I've got, what? I've broken my fingers four times. I've broken two ribs. I've, I've broken several bones. Every one of them's healed and works perfectly well. Why wouldn't a tooth heal when it has the opportunity? Okay, I think in most cases it never has the opportunity, right? But I've given my teeth many opportunities to heal by fasting for weeks at a time. And then healed is what they did. So this is what can happen. Now, some of you know if you're watching this video and you've seen others of mine, you probably already know that I live on mostly fruit, and that's what I recommend. And you know it's an interesting thing? Because many people say, yeah, but eating fruit is going to destroy your teeth. And people even talk about people who've had all kinds of tooth problems, rotting teeth because they've eaten too much fruit. Is this possible? Does this really happen? I've never met anybody that this has happened to, but I've, I've heard people claim it online. Uh, you know, I hear these stories sometimes. It's not something that happens often. I've never had a client have this experience, but, but it certainly can happen. But let's take a look at why that happens. First of all, I think instructive in, in helping to understand this is a surprising study that was published around 10 years ago. And what this study said was that eating an orange or an apple was more than three times as effective at removing plaque from your teeth as brushing your teeth. Let me repeat that. Eating an orange or an apple, eating a piece of fruit, removes the plaque from your teeth. So fruit doesn't cause problems. It's actually helping to clean your teeth. But we have to understand how this actually happens. What's going on here? And the answer is simple. The acid 
in acid fruits and subacid fruits actually removes a microscopically thin layer of enamel from your teeth. Where does the plaque live? Anybody? Where does the plaque live? On the top of your teeth, on the enamel. Right? It's going to live on the very top layer. And that's what's being removed. So the plaque is being removed because eating fruit is actually taking that enamel off your teeth. So, so why do people have problems? Well, the answer is simply this. We're designed, like our primate relatives, to eat only two or three times a day. Okay? And, you know, again, if you eat when, you're, when you first get hungry in the day, and I'm talking about learning what real hunger feels like and differentiating that between what most people experience every day in their stomach and real hunger, which is not a belly-based symptom and not an uncomfortable experience. If you eat when you get hungry and you eat until you're satisfied and you, can, you repeat that as necessary, you're going to find that it's only two or three times a day that your body actually wants and needs food. If you do that, you'll have no problem. Because what happens is, the acid in our fruit takes the enamel off your teeth, this microscopically thin layer. It's not like it's doing any significant damage. It takes a microscopically thin layer, which your body then works to recreate over the next two to three hours. So what happens if you are grazing all day long? What if you're having an orange every hour? Every time you eat an orange or an apple, it's taking some enamel off your teeth and your body never has a chance to set it back up. It just takes more, and then it takes more, and then it takes more, and over time, you're going to wear your teeth down. Okay, so grazing all day long is contrary to creating healthy teeth, and it's contrary to what your body would be telling you if you were listening to it, because the body does not want to be processing food all day. What it wants to do is get its needs met and then rest. Remember, it uses more energy than anything else. If you're working it all day long, you're expending an awful lot of excess energy, okay, just to get the engine moving. So we want to eat two or three meals and then rest. And when we do that, we find there's virtually no cavities and the teeth have a chance to, to recreate the enamel. But it's important that you not brush your teeth after you eat. Why? Because in those two to three hours after a fruit meal, your teeth, your enamel, is soft. And if you brush it, you're not going to allow it to recreate that hard enamel. Okay? So again, you know, one, one more oper uh, instance of every time we manipulate the body, every time we get involved, we wind up screwing things up. We want to stay out of the body's way as much as we can and let it do what it needs to do. All right? So... Um, how about using lemon and lime? Well, you want to be careful with lemon and lime. Hydrochloric acid has a pH of 2, if I remember correctly. And lime juice, lemon juice, a 3. So it's, it's only one-tenth, you know, it's, uh, let me say it the other way around, the acid is ten time, only 10 times stronger. That's pretty powerful acid, okay? Lemon and lime juice will deteriorate your teeth much more quickly. So if you're always putting lemon or lime juice in your water, you know, even a few drops has a significant impact on reducing the pH of the water, making it more acidic, which means it's going to be destroying your teeth. There, there, there's no reason to do that. Um, you, you have nothing to fear from your water alone even if it's slightly acidic pH, that's perfectly fine. But when you add lemon or lime, you're dropping that pH down by a hundred or a thousand times, a hundred or a thousand times stronger acid than the pure water was, regardless of the water's pH. Okay, so you want to be very careful with that and use those, those, uh, those juices very, very carefully, um, you know, and, and perhaps not so liberally, all right? And again, I, and I remember too, there's one more piece which is not directly related to teeth, but if you're putting lemon or lime juice in your water, every time you drink water, your body says, food. And it turns on the whole mechanism to assimilate nutrients, even though there's no food coming. 
So you're wasting the body's energy that way too. Drink pure water, it's not an issue. Okay, eventually, even better, get fully hydrated and get most of your water from your food. And then you're not even creating this issue at all. Any questions about anything I've shared with you so far? The question was about root canals, you know, and really was more of a comment. Most people don't know how bad root canals are. And that's true. And I don't claim to have any experience or expertise with this, but I had a, a client who was a holistic dentist in the US, and he was dead set against root canals. So that's the worst thing that you can do. You know, do, no matter what, do anything but a root canal. And if you have root canals, have them taken out. Because what happens is you wind up with a dead tooth trapping whatever is, you know, bacteria, whatever, underneath. And that's creating all kinds of issues. You're better off having the tooth removed than getting a root canal. Or they kill the, the, the nerves of the, you know, the canal and, and you wind up with this tooth blocking this abscessed area, essentially. You wind up creating lots of problems. Other questions? So you end up with no tooth? Well, you, want, you have a dead tooth there. Well, you, you can get a bridge. Mm -hmm. Now, he would say almost anything's better than a root canal. If your dentist tells you you need a root canal, should you then fast and see? Absolutely. See yeah, if you've got a serious issue of any kind, fasting would all, for me, fasting would always be the first thing I would do. But what's the chances of curing it if it's already... It, it, I don't know. It probably depends on the situation. It, I mean, I just don't, I can't answer the question. I don't know if, if, you, if that's something that you're going to be able to that's going to be able to heal or not going to be able to heal. But I would always give it the chance. Because if there's even a tiny bit still alive there, then give it a chance to, to cleanse and heal itself and regenerate. If it can possibly do that, you're going to be far better off uh, that way. So, um, other questions? Yeah, let's say if you ate an acid food or something that's like, you know, uh, is there any way like a to right away maybe do something to it so it doesn't damage it right away? Like no. after you ate, is it like swishing water in your mouth? What's that would uh, eliminate some of the damage? Let, let me be clear that eating an acid fruit doesn't damage your teeth. It doesn't damage your teeth. You have to rest your, your, your body is designed for this to happen. We are fruit eaters, and when we eat fruit, a microscopically thin layer of enamel is removed and then put back. But this is a natural process that ensures that you always have a new healthy tooth. So there's no damage there. Now you can, after you eat, especially I mean, if you're using lemon or lime for whatever reason, you might very well, after you eat, you might want to take some water in your mouth, swish it around, and spit it out. But don't brush it. Don't brush it. Don't brush it. Um, I would encourage, you, you know, I, I, like many things, I would suggest that we take the conventional wisdom around brushing and turn it on its head. So you were taught, I was taught, brush after meals. I would suggest you brush before meals. Okay, brush before you eat. That'll remind you to brush two or three times a day. If it's only twice a day, it's fine. Brush in the morning, brush in the evening before you eat. And then afterward, don't touch it, leave it alone. Okay, when you wake up in the morning, before you eat again, you can brush. You can floss. Um, I don't know that flossing right after a meal might actually be doing some damage too, I don't know. Yeah. I don't floss. What, fruit, yeah. what I find is that it always comes out eventually. <laughs> Usually I can work it out or it just comes out on its own and I don't worry about it. I mean, I, I do not floss. I'll be honest with you guys. Maybe you've already noticed this. I surround myself with great staff because they do all the work. I'm lazy. Okay? I don't like flossing. I never did. I never wanted to floss. Ah, too much work. I don't bother with it. My dentist always told me to floss. I never did. I would fly, I'd go buy some floss. I'd leave the dentist. I could buy some floss. I'd go home. I'd floss twice. I'm like, I don't like this. That was it. You don't need to floss. Okay? If you're eating correctly. Now, let's talk about some of the other issues, though, with eating. People eat dried fruit. That's a problem because the water has been removed. And now you've got something sticky that's full of sugar. So it's sitting on your teeth, and the sugar begins to decay your teeth. Okay, this is not a problem with fresh fruit, but dried fruit don't really belong in the body. If you insist on using them, you want to use them very, very infrequently, and you want to be careful afterward. 
Um, you know, I mean, this is where you, I guess you wait a couple hours and then you brush your teeth. Get that stuff off of there. Okay? But understand that, you know, dried fruit the way we dried fruit, this is not a natural thing. Um, the conventional uh, raw, raw vegan desserts are probably the worst. And I'm guilty of, of creating these things for other people sometimes, but you take nuts and then dates or raisins, you know, now you've got something that's really going to stick to your teeth and going to create more decay. So you want to be careful. Um, and with the way most people eat, the same thing is true with starchy foods. Starchy, starch is sticky. If you want to see something interesting, take a russet potato, a baking potato, slice it up, put it in a bowl of water. Use a Pyrex dish where you can see through the bowl, a glass bowl. After an hour, two hours, you're going to see a whole bunch of sticky starch on the bottom of the bowl. And if you feel it, I mean, they make paste with this stuff. Like to stick paper together when we were kids, right? This is paste. So if you're eating stuff like this that contains a lot of starch, like potatoes and grains and bread and so forth, rice, guess what happens? It sticks to your teeth. Over the course of a couple hours, guess what happens to the starch? It's converted to sugar and it sticks to your teeth. This creates a lot of problems, okay? So again, you know, animals in nature don't typically have dental problems as long as they are eating their natural diet. If we do the same thing, we don't have problems either. We create problems for ourselves by going to things that are not natural for our bodies. So eat a natural diet. If you have any issues, fast. Give your body a chance to cleanse and heal those teeth. They usually, it will usually be able to do that. Don't be surprised if you wind up losing some amalgams. And I have to say, I, you know, I, I, I would have thought, oh, wouldn't I have noticed if these things fell out? I never did. I mean, I don't know if they were, if they were maybe disintegrating little by little. And, and the dentist, well, the dentist did a test that same day. He said, he tested to see how much mercury I was, I was, had in my system and how much I was absorbing. And he said, you've got no problem at all. It's not an issue. Now, I don't know if that's because I had already fasted 30 times when I saw him and my body had been able to clean it out. I don't know. You can eject mercury from water fasting? Your body can, do, can eject anything that doesn't belong when it has enough energy and enough opportunity. Okay? Most people don't fast and so never get the chance to do this. But absolutely, your body knows this doesn't belong and will get rid of it when it has a chance to. Okay? So give it that opportunity. Um, other questions? So even the fact that you say, like, you know, don't eat, like, if you can, no breakfast, so that long fast from, like, the night before to maybe 12 o'clock, noon, or 1 o'clock, that's already, like, a, gives a chance for body to... Sure, it, 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 gives, it gives a chance for the body that... that 12-hour break if you skip breakfast or longer. In fact, it's more like a, you know, 6 until noon, right? That's an 18-hour break. That gives your body a chance every single day to do some cleansing and healing. How much cleansing and healing happens in the first 18 hours of a fast? Not very much. It's pretty surface level, but it's something. And, and to clarify, I never said to you, don't eat breakfast. Okay? What I said to you was, Listen to your body, okay? If, you're, if you have a real hunger sensation in the morning, eat breakfast. Most of you, I think, will find, once your system is clean, that you eventually won't have any hunger in the morning, in which case eating breakfast is completely unnecessary and harmful because you're creating a burden for the body if the body doesn't actually need food, okay? Um, the other things that, that we tend to do that are harmful are very hot and very cold foods can crack your teeth, can crack the enamel. And so, you know, again, we're designed to live in the tropical jungle. You, you see a lot of freezers out there in the jungle? Not so many, okay? Um, you know, there's, there's nothing that's really hot. I mean, you know, even food doesn't stay so hot. Usually it's things like coffee and tea, heated beverages that maintain this, this temperature where you burn your tongue. Well, think about the sensitive tissue inside your digestive tract. What are you doing to that tissue if you're consuming stuff that hot? Okay? But you know, you're also having an impact on your teeth. And the same thing is true with anything that's frozen. So you want to enjoy the occasional banana ice cream, go ahead. If you've got compromised teeth, be careful. And if you don't, you certainly don't want to follow hot with cold. 
or eat ice cream and coffee at the same, you know, something hot at the same time. That's creating a real problem. But be, be careful, because we're designed to be consuming food at room temperature, you know, at the ambient temperature. Not super hot and not super cold. Those are both stressors on your teeth. Okay? Any other questions? Anybody? Does this make sense to you guys? Oh, yeah, it's very nice. Again, I know this is for many people. This, these are paradigm shifts that are completely counter to what you've learned. But, you know, the truth almost always is counter to most of what we've learned. So we want to take our existing programming, we want to take our pre-existing beliefs, and we want to really examine them and see if they hold up under scrutiny, because often they do not. Also, marks on my, my tongue. You have marks on your tongue? Yeah, it's like teeth marks. Are you biting your tongue? Mm -hmm, I think so. You might want to stop doing that. Huh? You no, might want to stop doing that. I, 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 I grind my teeth, so I put something at night to not to grind it. Uh -huh. But I think that's probably some kind of deficiency. Some, some doctors say that okay. if, you, if you don't have the deficiency, you wouldn't grind your teeth. Well, that, that may be true. I'm not sure if, if grinding your teeth comes from a deficiency or perhaps a combination of things. Maybe there's a deficiency involved. Maybe there is also, maybe it's an, an emotional piece, a stress-related piece, or you know, the uh, inability to deal with some strong emotions. Uh, I would suggest, though, that using a mouth guard, while it protects your teeth, is only treating a symptom. Yeah. So if it's about a, a, a mineral imbalance, then you want to make sure that you get your body as clean as possible so it can properly assimilate what you're consuming and then eat the optimal diet. Because if you're doing those two things, you won't have any mineral imbalances. Um, if it's a stress issue, then you want to do what you need to do to deal with the emotional stress so that you're able to relax at night. Okay? Because, you know, again, it's fine to use a mouth guard, but grinding your teeth is likely to create all kinds of other issues. Right? It's, it's not the end. It's going to create issues. I mean, A, you're not resting. B, you're creating stress and pressure in your jaw all the time. And so protecting your teeth is great, but ultimately you're better off dealing with the actual underlying cause of the problem. So you, so you stop grinding your teeth and don't need a mouth guard. Okay? I hope that helps. Uh, I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.